Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. Last week, we talked about Halloween. The Halloween predates Christianity by hundreds of years. And we proved the, that the soul is not immortal. We showed you where the Bible talks about that the soul can die. And if you missed last week's program, why don't you send away for a DVD? It's free. We have nothing to sell on the program. We're offering this week two very important booklets. And the first booklet is God's Holy Days. God's Holy Days. Did you know that God has holy days that reveal his plan of salvation? We're going to talk today about God's holy days, how they relate to God's plan of salvation. And the second booklet, we have some more of these booklets came in. Uh, where did Halloween come from? And right back at, at the bottom, we, we see, did you know that Halloween was celebrated by pagans centuries before the New Testament church was founded? For these free booklets and free DVDs, all you need to do is call the number on the screen. We'd be happy to send them out to you free of charge. We, we do not ask the public for money. Now, as we studied how Halloween has pagan origins, and uh, we also would like to study God's holy days. We don't hear too much about God's holy days today. Most people call them Jewish holy days, and they're not. They're not just reserved for the Jews only but for everyone, as we're going to show today. So let's turn in our Bibles to uh, Leviticus chapter 23. In Leviticus chapter 23, why don't you get a Bible, a notebook, and a pen, and be prepared to write these scriptures down. And as you, uh, as you see them, it says here in verse 1, Leviticus chapter 23, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord. Now, did you notice it didn't say the feast of the Jews, the feast of the Hebrews, the feast of the Israelites. These are the feasts of the Lord. They belong to the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts, so they belong to God. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. It doesn't say the Sabbath of the Jews here. It says it's the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Now I'd like you to turn to uh, Mark chapter 2. Let's turn to the New Testament to the words of Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 2. In Mark chapter 2 we'll look in verse 27 and we'll read it. And it says here in verse 27, And he said unto them, that's Jesus, said unto them, The Sabbath, the Sabbath was made for man. You see that? The Sabbath was made for mankind. It wasn't made for the Jew. It wasn't made for the Israelite. It was made for all of mankind and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. The Lord's day is the Sabbath day. It says, therefore, 
the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Doesn't say anything here about Sunday. Now, some people think Sunday is the Sabbath day. Now, if you look in your calendar and you, you see uh, Sunday is the first day of the week, and then you'll see Tuesday's the second day, and Wednesday, uh, Monday's the second day, Tuesday's the third, and so forth, and you count down to Saturday, you'll see Saturday is the seventh day of the week. Would you turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 3? 2 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to understand that God is not trying to convert the whole world at this time, but he says here in verse 8, chapter 3, in verse 8, it says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. So one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all, see that all, should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord, this is not talking about Saturday or Sunday, this is talking about the day of the Lord is a day of punishment for this earth. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This earth is going to be a cinder in space. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation or conduct and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, his promise here, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. What's righteousness? All thy commandments are righteousness, as it says in the Psalms. I'd like you to turn now to Revelation chapter 20. Now, I'd like to explain something here. One day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Now we have a seven day week, seven days in the week. Now each day represents a thousand years. So we have a 7,000 year plan of salvation. God has a 7,000 year salvation plan. Six years, 6,000 years, is devoted to man's inhumanity to man. God has allowed man to set up his own governments, his own religions, his own educational systems, his own banking systems. God has allowed man to write his own laws. And God is basically has hands off during the first 6,000 years, except when it has to do with his plan of salvation. And he will intervene at times. But basically, he has hands off. So you have 6,000 years of man's inhumanity to man. The 7,000 year period is the millennium. The millennium represents a thousand years of peace on this earth with God ruling over this earth. Let's read it. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, 
and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, they're living and reigning with Christ a thousand years. Where at? Where at? In heaven or on earth? Let's go back to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, and we'll see where we are ruling with Jesus Christ. Is it heaven or is it earth? Revelation 5 verse 10. And let's read it. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We're going to reign on the earth. The problems are right down here on earth. There's no problems in heaven. God has everything under control in heaven. We have all the problems down here on this earth. Let's go back to the Leviticus chapter 23. We're going to understand how God is using his holy days for his plan of salvation. Now, Leviticus 23, and we'll look in verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord. So God repeats it here. Even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. In the 14th day of the first month at even, that's at sundown, is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day, that's the very next day of the same month, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, or Matzos, unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Why? Why are we supposed to put leaven out of our homes and eat unleavened bread? Well, we're going to explain it to you. In the first day, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. And in the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So we put leavening out of our homes on those two, on that entire week of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, why are we doing that? Is that New Testament teaching besides Old Testament? No, it's also New Testament teaching. What happens is leavening represents sin. And once we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, he is the, he is the lamb. He represents the lamb of Passover, the Passover lamb that was slain and the blood was smeared on the doorposts and the lintel. Once we accept him, we've got to put sin out of our lives. That's what leavening represents. Now let's read it in chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 6. We'll start in verse 6 here. And it says, Your glorying is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Now, we're going to come back in a moment. Uh, we'll be right back. Please don't go away. We'd like you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll start in verse 7 when we come back. We'll be right back. Welcome to La Buena Vida Women's Club, located away from the crowds but close to home. Come in throughout the day for Jazzercise, the world's dance fitness leader for nearly 40 years. Treat yourself to a relaxing massage. Or unwind the lounge area or outside on the balcony with friends. La Buena Vida Women's Club, located and designed with women in mind. For information, call Diane at 650-9721. If you're looking for a new pet that you can cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. 
Shelters are full of healthy, loyal, fun, loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org. see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, it's always a celebration. Welcome back to the program. I, I skipped the scripture. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 26. Let's see the words of Jesus Christ first. Matthew 26, and we'll look in verse 1. And here it says, And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days, is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Now, he knew the day of his death. He knew he was going to die on the Passover day. That's why God wants us to celebrate the Passover day, and Jesus wants us to also celebrate the Passover day. It's an important day. He took the place of the Passover lamb, then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtility and kill him. But they said, not on the feast day. What's the feast day? The feast day was the feast of unleavened bread, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was a holy day. And they said, not on the feast day, not on this holy day, lest there be an uproar among the people. So they decided that he was to die on the Passover day. Now we'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and now we'll see what Paul says about this particular feast of unleavened bread. And let's drop down to verse 6. So here we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. Your glorying is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So a little bit of leaven will leaven a whole lump. You only need a tiny bit of leaven and you've got an 11 product. And Paul says here, purge out therefore the old leaven. In other words, take the old leaven out of your homes, get rid of it. But he even goes further than that. He talks about leaven out of your life. Take sin out of your life. That you may be a new lump. That's without leavening. As you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. He doesn't say even Christ our Easter. He doesn't use the word Easter. He uses the word Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Who is us? Us is Corinthians keeping the feast. These were Gentiles keeping this feast of unleavened bread. Yes, that's true. They did, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, if we didn't have this New Testament scripture here, we wouldn't quite understand what leaven had to do with sin. We put sin out of our lives. Once we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, then and the next thing we need to do is put sin out of our lives. And that, that's pictured by putting 
leaven out of our homes for that seven days. Seven days is a complete a, a completeness. So we're, seven is a complete number and we put sin out of our lives. Okay, let's go on now back to Leviticus chapter 23 for another holy day. These holy days are in line with each other and they do represent God's plan of salvation. And we need to understand it because if we don't understand God's holy days, we will not understand his plan of salvation. Let's go to verse 4. That's Leviticus chapter 23, verse 4. Well, we did that. Let's drop down now to verse 10. Verse 10, let's read that. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you be come into the land which I give unto you and shall reap the harvest thereof, reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Now this Sabbath took place sometime during the days of unleavened bread. There was a Sabbath day. And then following the, the Sabbath day, there was a Sunday. So it was the morrow after the Sabbath. So that would make it a Sunday. The priest shall wave it. Now this is important that we understand this. And you shall offer that day when you wave the sheaf a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. This he lamb without a blemish represents Jesus Christ's sacrifice. Okay? And it talks here, at verse 15. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. This is at the wave sheaf offering. From the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So seven times seven would be 49. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, which comes out on a Sunday, shall you number 50 days. So that represents Pentecost. Now let's go down to verse 21. This day of Pentecost is a very important day. And in verse 21 it says, And you shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. So this is a day that we call Pentecost, but the Old Testament calls it Feast of Weeks or Feast of First Fruits, or of course Pentecost, which means count 50. That's what it means. So here we are, we're counting 50. Let's go now back to the book of Acts. Acts chapter one. Acts chapter 1, and we'll look at verse 1. Okay. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive, after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. I want you to remember this 40 days. It's important. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So he was teaching them for 40 days. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Stay here in Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, you have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, 
but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit not many days hence. It was actually 10 more days. So let's read that in Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Why? This was a holy day, a Old Testament holy day. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, they weren't speaking a bunch of gibberish. It says, and they were, they were there dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They were speaking languages. Now, let's go down to verse uh, 36. Here, Peter is speak, speaking to these people, and he says, No, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter told them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, 3,000 people were baptized that day, and 3,000 people were added to the church on that very day. Please send away for these three booklets, the God's Holy Days. Did you know God has holy days that reveal his plan of salvation? There's actually seven holy days. And where did Halloween come from? You're going to want to know that. Do you want your children out there uh, celebrating a pagan day? Uh, you want to know what this is Halloween's all about. Now, we meet every Saturday at 1 p.m. at 1701 East Missouri. And you're all welcome to join us in an interactive Bible study every Saturday, 1 o'clock. Please come, please join us. It's interactive, means you can interact with us. And uh, you can ask questions, you can give opinions, you can read scripture, and it's a, it's a very informative time, and we're happy to have you. Well, folks, until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.